miss a line in the game, you reset. You miss it on the track, you could die. Hello everyone, I'm Jacqueline Coley here with the cast and filmmakers of Gran Turismo for our big ticket interview. Welcome everyone. Neil, I'm gonna start with you for this one because I know that you made an intense sort of vision as far as like not only making sure you put these actors in the car, but you also had these IMAX cameras. So talk about how you really wanted to, again, put us in the seat of F1 racing. IMAX actually doesn't there's very few films that are made with IMAX cameras anymore because they're organic negative uh, film celluloid cameras. So we use digital cameras that had IMAX certified um, chips in them. So we just we just kind of made sure that all of the footage that we got was was IMAX certified and able to be in mm -hmm. in giant theaters. So it's a resolution thing. Um, and it you know the approach was for everything to be as real as possible and then rely on VFX if we needed to later, but try to do everything in camera. So the film really has like a, a, a sort of an old school filmmaking approach where it's incredibly production heavy and uh, moving lots of race cars to different racetracks and then having the actors like Archie inside the uh, torture chamber known as the car. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's just a very visceral, real feeling. So hopefully on an IMAX screen, it's gonna be you know intense and, and you can really feel like it was made with real cars and real, real people. I do love that. And Archie, I'm going to start with you because that's the, uh, video games are the ultimate bit of wish fulfillment. Mm -hmm. But you are really taking that to the next level where you have this real life story that this is based on where this guy goes from playing the video game to being in the car seat. Talk about what that was like for you because I know it was a very intense training process to get prepared for. As Neil said, it was visceral and real. Uh, a lot realer than I, I think I anticipated. Um, I remember like day one, the safety guy coming and being like, the things we are attempting here have never been attempted before in cinema. And I was looking at Neil like, Really, bro? <laughs> <laughs> <That's great. laughs> so we don't even want to give it a go with the green screen thing. Uh, just see if it works. I mean, it was intense. I there's a reason these guys are some of the best athletes in the world because it is one of the most taxing things I've ever done. I mean. I was throwing up pretty much on a daily basis. The G-force, all of that stuff that you see, there's nothing. Every shot you see of me in the car is me in the car. We didn't cheat. There's no wind machine blowing me to make it look like I'm like we're moving. There's no static movements. I'm in the car going racing speed, and there's kind of just nothing to prepare you for that unless you're built that way. We learned pretty quickly that I'm not, uh, <laughs> and, I'm an, and I, am, uh, I'm, I am an actor. Um, uh, and Archie's also really tall, so okay. there were issues. We had to like remove the seat between the stunt driver and then Archie to make oh, sure he could wow. fit in. Six foot five, so those Le Mans yeah. starts, you know, I'm nimble. That is, uh, that's one lucky thing. But it was, it was an incredible experience to do something that you know, I clearly, at my size, was never <laughs> built or designed to do, and to be with some of the best people in the industry doing it, it was, yeah. Next film is a jockey, horse racing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm just going through them all, I'm going through them all. Yeah. <laughs> I will add, and you also kept it a family affair because one of your stunt drivers was actually Jan, correctly, he was yeah. on set. Like, that is so crazy, we, talk. <laughs> I mean, has that ever been, I don't know if that's ever been done before, with someone, like they're making about someone and the, the real person yeah, stunt driver. It was amazing, I mean, it was one amazing, to have him do the driving, which kind of was a like a beautiful accident. He, we were just bringing Jan in to, I think maybe just for one scene, and and he was so brilliant at it. I mean, it's one thing to be an incredible driver, but then to be able to hit marks and and drive in that kind of way is a separate skill. And he was so good at both that he ended up just staying for the rest of the se rest of the shoot. But it was such an unbelievably incredible tool for us because. Mm -hmm. Yama's on set as this pool of information, so we improvise so many scenes. And so if, you know, if there was something very specific about Yan's life that I needed to improvise around, he was there the entire time. I could, he could feed me drips of information, things that, I remember having a conversation with Yan about the, the, the setup in his room that he initially qualified on for GT Academy was a set that he built in TT class, in a woodwork class himself. Wow. And I remember saying that to Neil, like, dude, how crazy is that? And he was like, what? <laughs> well, I mean, me and Neil were like getting, I mean, Yama chatting so much. I was like, yeah, you didn't know that? And so we had that built then for, for yeah. the film in his yeah, bedroom is the, the exact replica of the one that he made himself in woodwork class. It was like things like that. He was just there as a constant resource. It was I amazing. 
Orlando, I do have to bring it to you because big budget action and genre filmmaking is nothing new to you, but this is a different type of that film. So, you know, I had a, an initial conversation with Neil and um, I'm a huge fan anyway um, from back in the day and we have, we have uh, friends in common like Peter Jackson. So we discussed the, um, his vision for the movie, which was just really exciting to me because Neil's got this obviously epic kind of huge scale of the way he approaches making films. And he, and he had this vision for taking that all kind of narrowing all that on, into, into what is a real true life story, mm -hmm. but with this, you know, with driving scenes that will kind of blow your mind. So it's something you want to see on a big screen, right? Because it's like, it's a, a, but we have this title, you know, Gran Turismo. I'm not a gamer, but I appreciate Gran Turismo because it's like one of the biggest titles out there. Mm -hmm. But within that title, you've got the story of, um, my character Danny comes up with this idea. Danny is actually based on Darren Cox, who was a marketing manager for Nissan and went to Sony and came up with this idea of putting kids and ultimately, um, Archie's character, Yan, takes the podium at, at the end of the day. And it, well, it doesn't take the whole podium, but he gets on, on the podium after Le Mans because he, he was so good, he won this GT Academy that Danny came up with this idea to like, we're gonna take kids from, it's a dream, right? Yeah. It's a dreamer's movie. It's like Danny had this dream of putting kids in cars onto tracks and, and he had a dream of doing it, you know, and he won. And it, so it's, it, that, that to me was like something I think kids can get into and, you know, it's a movie that, I think people will appreciate, you know, and if you love race cars and driving, then this is that. Any yeah. podium within months as well, I should say as well. Yeah. How many months was, was it? Like years later. How many like months was it? Was, it? Because like, I keep wanting to. I think it was over twelve months. Yeah, wow. it was crazy, which is insane. To have yeah. never had any like real car experience and then, race car experience, and then know that the. I mean, but he passed his driving test like maybe a couple of weeks before he nice. drove. Before he drove to take this um, yeah. to enter GT Academy, yeah. like, it was crazy. He had barely been in the car, and then within twelve months, he, Gran Turismo prepared him. That. But it shows you how, how accurate the tracks are, totally. you know, and how accurate Again. the dynamics yeah. of the cars are, that he could he could make that switch. Yeah. I do love that. And then bringing you along, ma'am. Jerry can tell us all about that. You can tell us all about the behind the scenes. I feel like this is like another <laughs> like kind of off sort of like, oh, I can tell you what it's really like, but um, if I can't talk to you intensely about the Spice Girls, please tell us how much wisdom you were able to sort of impart as far as someone who's been right there on the race car, like on the tracks, way closer than any of us could because of your incredible partner. Well, I've always loved cars. My father was a second-hand car dealer. <laughs> was and, really? Yeah. Really? And yeah. so I was always taken to like racing. And so I've always had that love for it. And then, you know, being backstage and looking at how F1 happens will blow your mind. It's so, you really respect them as athletes. Mm -hmm. It's a team sport. You know, they really have to work together. It's not just to drive around the track. Mm -hmm. You appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And then, but the other thing is it's dangerous. It's really dangerous. Mm -hmm. And you know, what I love about this movie is that, and as a director, he really embodies, you know, okay, it's an action movie, but it's more than that. It's an unairbrushed action movie. You feel it, you, yeah. you really feel the pulse of it, you know, through your creativity. I think it's, what is brilliant. You really get a taste of it. Mm -hmm. and, um, and the acting is real. I think that's really sort of elevates it to a modern day action film. It really yeah. does. I will have to ask this just a little bit slightly. You've been around this for a lot longer. Have you felt the rise in recent years, both with folks in F1? Because I would feel it's getting crazy. This is nothing compared to the crowds you've seen in your time, but it's getting like insane in a lot of ways. It's like Drive to Survive is a lot. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Yeah. I always describe it as it's the Kardashians on wheels. Yeah. You know, you get, we all fall in love with personalities. You know, so you learn about, it is that. From, it, it, it is that. that. You've got all these amazing personalities these you know very good good-looking drivers these team principals you know all at you know at each other and then also you can appreciate that from a technical side yeah. you start appreciating that there's so much more to it yeah. so there's a, it's a great entry point and then when you start to um, unpeel it then you go wow yeah so have you been to a race before yeah I was just I was just about to say actually when we before were doing this. when we were doing um, prep for Gran Turismo like yeah. f films Films are very, um, they're very logistically heavy, right, yeah. as, as productions. And so I, I sort of, when I think of logistics, I think of filmmaking because it's my experience. But we, were, we shot this in Hungary at the Hungaro Ring. A lot of the film was shot there, and it's a Formula One track. So as we were in prep, mm -hmm. 
F1 at Hungary was there and I could see the scale of it mm. and it was like, you know, it was like a hundred times the size of, of a film. Mm. And, then, and, and then they also go to tracks all over the world, right? And I was, I was struck with the level of logistics around that as a sport must, I mean, it probably must be the most logistically heavy thing, I think, on the globe. Like, yeah. It's really impressive. I, again, I really, again, I'm maybe of a fan of the more, maybe the drivers, let's be honest. Yeah. I really enjoy their, their TikToks, uh, but there's also folks that are huge fans, and like myself, of the video game Gran Turismo. There's going to be folks that are going to be just a fan of all of your talents here. How did you approach that as a filmmaker to make sure you brought in the racing fans, the gaming fans, maybe some of the girls that just like the way the drivers suit up? You know, how did you, how did you bring us all in here for this one? Actually, uh, I was at a test screening in Dallas where Orlando changes his shirt in the car, and a lot of girls were like, quite stoked about that. It was like audible in the theater, which is hilarious. <laughs> but that, that's one of the only times, yeah, that was one of the only times where Good I was man. Uh, Good man. I, just, I, I sort of lucked out with that, I guess. Good man. <laughs> but, um, I, no, I mean, the way that I, I think that any film is just going to live or die whether or not its emotional skeleton is strong, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you don't have that, you don't really have a film. Yeah. And there was, there was um, I think if people see this movie watching Gran Turismo, they're gonna be surprised by the level of emotion in the movie. It's much more emotional than you would expect. Mm -hmm. For a video game film, for a film about racing, it's way, way, way more emotional. And then it's also a true story, which I think probably amplifies that to some degree. Mm -hmm. So um, from my way into it was an emotional story and then just try to make it, I, I wanted it incredibly unvarnished, like no, as limited visual effects as possible, everything as real as possible, and it, it sort of, I think it, the end result does feel that way. It feels like just, um, I mean, it's much cleaner than the other films that I've made, just because I default to, you know, more dystopian kind of imagery, but it still does feel very real. I really do appreciate it. this is like the this is such a shiny little lovely family movie that you've done. I'm like mm -hmm. this is uh, I was like if you would have asked me back then maybe yeah. just didn't, but I love that this is a uh, the next progression. Archie, I have to ask you, sir, as someone who's played video games, there's such a huge video game like renaissance happening right mm -hmm. now. We've had the better entries, sort of like we finally figured it out. Do you feel like well, first of all, what was your history with it? Did you play it as the game? Are you a heavy gamer, or was this some sort of like more of the deep dive into it? The true answer is no. I, uh, I didn't. I, I didn't play games growing up. That was not my experience. But I was talking about this a minute ago. One, I think the incredible and the fun thing about our job is diving headfirst into these worlds and these communities that we didn't, like we didn't have access to when we were younger. I had access to games. I've just got an addictive personality, so I knew I had to stay away as a kid. <laughs> and otherwise, I would have never have done anything. Yeah. Um, so my experience of Gran Turismo coming to this, I mean. All I was doing the entire time was practicing. A couple of months before, we, uh, yeah, PlayStation right. sent a set to my house, and it was just repetition, repetition, repetition. I had this unbelievable coach, David Perel, who whose story kind of mimics Yan. He started on GT on the on the console, and now he's an unbelievable driver. Drives for Ferrari. yeah, it's like a division of Ferrari. Yeah, yeah. and. Um, and he's unbelievable. And um, and it was just practice, practice, practice. I spent, and there'd be moments where I was like at it for hours, like kind of, because all it is is repetition, learning, apex entry, learning like the breaths of the, the, the brakes, like feeling how hard everything is, feeling like feeling the tracks. I'd be doing it for hours and then I'd be like, maybe I should stop. And then I go, oh, I'm at work. <laughs> this is work. I can do, I can do this. And I just yeah. go again for a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was, I mean, it was amazing to start leaning into that because I just wasn't allowed as a kid. Um, so oh, Archie got the job. It was like not into video games, hate cars. Oh, wow. <laughs> and he was hey. like, you, 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 you perfect. Guy. Well, I was honest about it though. It's uh, true. Like, hey. you know. And then you're so Again, that makes it even better. I think that's and a six foot five, and six foot five. It was like everything. <laughs> it just shows you how perfect he must yeah. be. Yeah, no, I tell you what's perfect about him. He's got the biggest heart Aww. and the emotion, and that is what defines this movie. Very good yeah. one. And it's it, and as well as good looking, but it's that's what really shines through. This is a you know, it's about cars, it's about racing, but it's also about heart and inspiration and dreams coming true for anyone. Yeah. And I think.
think Archie embodies that. That's the energy he brings. Mm -hmm. That's why he got the job. Thank, thank you so. very much. That's, that's so very sweet. Cool. Well said, uh, Jerry. That, that was so really sweet. Uh, Orlando, Blushing. I want to bring it to you because you mentioned him, the executive that your role is based off of. I think that is probably some of the best fan casting that he could have probably done. To you be said like. <laughs> <laughs> is that not true? No, you said, said that on oh, set. Said he, he was on set one day and he was, he was like, yeah, this is pretty good for me. <laughs> <laughs> so that's me. <laughs> <laughs> But did you get to spend a lot of time with him? And what was the, I know it's not exactly a replication, but what was the essence of him that you wanted to make sure you got folks to understand? Because he really sort of was a mad scientist. Yeah, he was a dream, he was a dreamer in his own way. I yeah. mean, he was really a mad wizard about it. He kind of had this, he's got this sort of insatiable appetite for life, but also this like dog with a bone attitude towards getting something done. Mm. Um, he's, um, and he's, he's, he's super passionate and, and he was, he had a, he has and remains he has a remarkable relationship with Yan. Um, they really supported each other, and he really supported Yan through the years, and 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 to this day still does. He, um, but he had this vision, and I just saw and 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 I said to Neil, I think, like unlike anything else, I'm just going to play pure passion, you know, just like because. Who doesn't, you know, get off on passion and just real ad adoration for the world that he's in? Because he's got that insatiable appetite for life, but also for the game, and but not for the for the for the world that he was building out. And the, I think the idea that that would even be possible mm -hmm. for him it is sort of like crazy in itself and it speaks to <laughs> the yeah. way that he thinks outside of the box yeah. but this whole movie is about out being outside living outside of the box inside the box of the car but outside the box in terms of what you think you can do and how you would do it mm -hmm. and how you'd execute and he he so so that's what we we sort of we kind of landed on at the end of the day didn't we yeah we were like for sure i love that um jerry if it, i didn't have to maybe give the last word to you as a mm. girl birth born in the 1980s i've idolized you forever so i have to oh, give you this great you. last word uh i will say this the heart of this movie is the family and playing the mother figure. I know there's women on the sidelines of this sport that yeah. you were really emulating yourself, including being one of them. Yeah. What did you want audiences to understand about that? Because you're right, it's not just putting the guy in the car. There's a, there's a real family and team part of all of this. Yeah, and there's so many elements to it. I think this is a movie about growing up. It's about family, it's about friendship and encouraging each other. But then sometimes as parents, we project our own fears onto our kids. Mm -hmm. You want them to grow up and shine, but also you're, you're scared. You don't want them to make the same mistakes as you. And I think that's all injected in there just to give it, like it grounds it to say, you know, we love each other, but actually I'm frightened, mm. like we all are, mm. you know. And also a, there was a, tr a true family, it was a true, yeah. it, it, it came from a place of realism. Yeah. Yeah. You feel the anger, you know how families can get a little bit, you feel that as well within mm. it. Well, yeah. thank you so much for bringing that oh, to Oh, it was audience. a pleasure. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, these guys are amazing and so talented. As is she, she's dishing mm. up with a comment. So I, I think she. it's, I think the, the whole family will get something out of it. You know, whether you're a gamer, whether you love cars, whether you love friendships, you know, mm. this man is absolute talent. Well, uh, no, he is, so I well, think... She's definitely <laughs> the All right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was just watching. Yeah. 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 Husson, he's, you yeah. know, nominated for an Academy Award. You know, he plays yeah. the dad of this, that everyone, every father will identify with. Yeah. Oh, I love this. Okay, we can't tease them anymore. I want to thank all of you and thank all of you for watching. Thank, thank you. you.